Hi guys, Todd here. Okay, a while back I, uh, I did a video which was an introduction to electronic cigarettes, which uh, covered the basics, as in, you know, we started off with what is an electronic cigarette and went through the various types and different things you could do. Uh, I want to do a video in the same kind of uh, vein as this time it's going to be about rebuildable atomizers and as before this is not going to be going down into the nitty gritty it's going to be very high level and you know it's an introduction it's so that you know if you've never come across rebuildables before if you're using capital tanks things like that uh, then hopefully watching this will give you a bit of an overview of what there is out there, how it works, and uh, you know the benefits. Um, so that's me done the intro. I will now go and think on how the hell I'm going to do the rest of this. Uh, I'll through this. I have already done. Uh, that's the dog with his squeaky toy. Uh, I've already done a lot of rebuildable tutorials, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll link to them at various points up and down here, uh, so you can go and watch them if you want in your own time. Uh, but uh, right, I'll go and see if I can come up with some kind of plan or script for this, uh, but bear with me. Okay, first things first. What is a rebuildable, and how does it differ from what you're used to vaping with? Well, this is a capo tank. A capo tank? See, I, I'm trying to teach you stuff and I haven't got a clue myself. This is a cartomizer uh, that a lot of you may be used to. And the uh, cartomizer, you know, as with everything vaping related, it all comes down to, you know, you're going to have a coil of some description and it's going to be wrapped around something or going through something. When you push power button on your mod, battery, whatever it may be, it's going to heat up that coil which is then going to vaporise your juice. That's how a capto works. You pop your juice in it, push the power button, coil inside the capto heats up and vaporises the juice. Now once this, it only has a certain lifespan, you know, it's only going to last, well, a lot of people consider these disposable, some people wash them out and reuse them, the choice is yours. Now, rebuildables, at the end of the day, it's all in the name. It's a rebuildable. A cartomizer, strictly speaking, is not rebuildable. It's disposable. This, this is an atomizer. And take the top off like so, Let's see if we can get zoomed in, you can see that there is a coil going round a wick and when I push the power button that coil is going to heat up which will then vaporise the juice that is on that wick and there's the reservoir of juice in the tank there and that's it, it's very basic. Now for rebuildables there's certain things you're going to need. For a start, you're going to need wire. Now, you can have various types of wire, and uh, you know what happens is you'll connect this wire to a negative post and a positive post, and you know the power will travel through that wire and heat up whatever it's wrapped around. Now, you can use silica, which is this stuff, you know, a lot of things like the, the VV Nova, Kangers, Evods, things like that, they use things like this. And essentially at the end of the day, all you're doing is taking your wire, you're wrapping it round, like so, and that's it. You put it into the device. The thing about rebuildables is, Rather than having to dispose of this, once the taste starts going, you can rebuild it yourself. 
you just cut yourself another bit of wire, cut yourself another bit of silica or mesh or whatever it is you're using and that's you, you're good to go uh, you, you know, and it's dirt cheap and it's really easy to do I can do it, believe me, it's easy it takes practice you have to practice, you're not going to get it straight off the bat if you do, get in touch and let me know how you did it um, and there is various things that you, you'll you find yourself tinkering with which we'll come back to uh, so that, uh, it's a simplistic term a rebuildable atomizer is just a device that you can rebuild yourself with your own materials and that in itself keeps the costs down and long term, long term you know, you are going to save money rather than just keep buying cartos and chucking them in the bin. Uh, so that is a rebuildable atomizer. We'll start off with uh, possibly the most basic uh, rebuildable, rebuildable you're going to come across. I mean, there's so many different types. Um, but starting off, you have things like uh, your EVODs, Kanga tanks, things like that. And they all come and hopefully there's no juice in this with this little thing here you see the wee bits of wick below the plastic just beside my fingers there well that's in focus, that's silica that's the silica I was on a bit earlier on now, these rebuildable heads are, are usually about two pound or something like that. Um, and you can buy them, not a problem. You can buy them by the box and get them in bulk. And, you know, if you're going to stick with these, no problem. However, if you start to lose the taste in them, it's the easiest thing in the world to rebuild them yourself. Um, there is a learning curve, as I said earlier, but go for it. Buy yourself a real wire buy yourself some silica or some stainless steel mesh and that's it um, what I'll do right now is I will put a link up to rebuilding I think it was an E oh god what is it it'll be rebuilding something like one of these uh, if you go and watch that you'll see exactly how it's broken down and how to rebuild it yourself and if you're going to stick with these over the course of months and a year you'll save yourself some money um, actually very easy I can't stress enough it is easy people will say it's difficult and they can't do it patience, stick with it watch as many tutorial videos as you can just if you're having a bad day and it's not working for you put it all down, walk away come back the next day and I guarantee you it will work I've been there so many times myself and still today, I still have days like that. So just don't give up, persevere. Uh, but let's say there would have been a link up there showing you where to go to uh, watch a video on how to rebuild one of these. But a lot of people move on to after they've used EVODs and things like that. Or they use them side by side. Because uh, there's no reason why you can't use one and use the other. Uh, is what they call a, a rebuildable dripping atomizer or an RDA, you'll hear it called that as well and this is an RDA, the silver bit on top of a mechanical mod which is the Nemesis and this is called the DRA version 2 uh, it's a dripping atomizer, I don't know if there's any liquid in it now Back at the start, I was saying to you that essentially at the end of the day, when you're rebuilding something, all it is, is it's going to be a bit of wicking material, which can be silica or stainless steel mesh or cotton or whatever you want, with a coil wrapped around it between two posts. And that's what we have here. Turn that round. I've been using this for a while. So you can see there's a bit of silica there, there's a dirty coil in between the two posts, if I push the button, 
I'll try and push the button. That's it. That's all there is to a rebuildable drip and atomizer, and it's it's the basics of everything. Uh, once again, I'll put a, a link up here to show you how to be, build a rebuildable dripping atomizer. It's a basic one, it's nothing fancy. Um, you'll hear things, people talking about uh, dual coils, quad coils and things like that. Uh, this is a single coil one. Uh, I would strongly suggest you learn how to do a single coil first before you get into things like dual coils and things like that. Um, but that's it. It's a rebuildable dripping itemizer. And essentially all you do is, you know, you'll, as always, you'll take your air hole on the cap. The air hole should always line up with the coil. And you'll hear a lot of people talk about that. Basically what happens is, if you do not put the air hole directly in front of the coil, if it's off to the side, left or right, then you will get masses of throat hit, but very little vapour. If it's lined up directly in front of the, the coil, you get the perfect balance of vapour and throat hit. You know, you get the both. You get the best of everything. And let's have another little vape. And there we go. Right. That's a rebuildable dripping atomizer out of the way. Uh, we'll move on to something else now. Right, we're moving up to the the main show, really. I mean, this is kind of what a lot of people get into this game for. Um, it's possibly the most popular uh, rebuildable that you get. Uh, but there are others, and we'll get on to them. But this tank here, Nemesis again, a mod, a mechanical mod with a battery in it. This is a Genesis Atomizer, which will always consist, or nearly always consist, of a tank which will hold e-liquid in the bottom. There will be a top cap with an air hole on it, and a drip tip in the top. And hopefully this will be. Now, if I take the top cap off, some of them screw off, some of them are just held on with O-rings. Now, we'll hopefully see this will focus. There we go. Uh, once again, we have a coil connected to a negative post and a positive post. Now, when I push the button, it heats up and vaporizes the juice. Now, this is a bottom-fed Genesis Atomizer. You do get top-fed ones, which are much the same, except the, the juice is in a tank above, and the wicking material, the, the wick, goes up instead of down. Uh, that's a top-fed Genesis Atomizer. This is a bottom-fed one, which is the more popular one. Top fed ones are very good for things like uh, dessert, fruit flavours, things like that, because it gives a slightly cooler vape, whereas the bottom fed Genesis Atomizer tends to be a warmer vape. Um, now, the main thing with these guys is the wick. Now, for example, just now, I actually have this thing here which is a piece of stainless steel rope and that is what I am using as my wicking material the juice gets drawn up the wick gets soaked and pulled up to the top and then gets heated up by the coil you also can get this which is stainless steel mesh and that also gets used as a wicking material. And you can actually use silica as well that I showed you earlier on. Now what I'll do is I'll put a link into 
how to you know build a stainless steel mesh wick and I'll also put a link in how to do it with stainless steel rope uh, so there'll be two links there that you can go off and you can watch the other videos if you're interested in going down this route um, personally big fan of uh, rebuildable Genesis atomizers I like them uh, they give a, a really can give you a really good vape. I'm going to say cracking vape like I usually do. Now a lot of this comes down to resistance and I'll link to another video here just now that I've done that will explain what resistance is. Um, in short uh, and you'll get more information on this in the video. The wire you use comes in different sizes. The thicker the wire you use, the lower the resistance you're going to get, which means the hotter your coil is going to burn. Well, not burn or vaporize. So the thicker the wire, the lower the resistance. The thinner the wire, the highest, higher. Um, however, if you say if I put three coils around my finger here, I'm going to get a certain resistance. If it's too low, I can put another coil around to increase the resistance. If that's still too low, I can put another coil around. I'll cover it in more detail in that video that I'll link to. Uh, but that's just a very, very basic explanation of it. Um, resistance is, is a very important thing when it comes to rebuildable atomizers uh, of any description. If you find that your vape is burnt, or uh, the chances are you're running too low a resistance and your wick is not supplying enough juice to keep up with that lower resistance. The other thing you have to bear in mind is if you're using a mechanical mod which has no protection built into it, there's no circuitry in it, it's just a battery. If you use a mechanical mod, you have to be careful that you don't use too low a resistance or you can damage your batteries. If you're using something like a variable voltage or a variable wattage device, it has inbuilt protection. So, in a kind of nutshell, that is a rebuildable atomizer, uh, a rebuildable Genesis atomizer. And some people call them RBA, rebuildable atomizer. Now, hopefully, you're still awake and still with me. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to keep this as high level as possible so that you know you would just go to sleep on me. Um, let's say there's there's very many you know there's different types of rebuildable atomizers. You know you get a hybrid. This is a an all-in-one device. The battery, the tank, and everything's built into one. There's a, another example there. You know, they come in all shapes and sizes and, you know, they'll all promise you the earth. At the end of the day, the main thing that matters when it comes to rebuildables, it doesn't matter how great the device is, if you're not building the coil properly, then, it, you know, it's really going to affect the taste. Now, you can also get, uh, and I did have one lying here somewhere, and it's gone walkabout. Now, this is a rebuildable atomizer as well. This is what's called an IATI, a Golden Greek IATI. Now, as before, it's a tank, holds juice, and inside is a coil and a wick. But the coil is... The, the wicking material is silica and the coil is still, you know, cantle, which I'll come, we do mentioned in another video I'll link to. Uh, now, 
some people, and this varies from person to person, believe that uh, silica is better for a certain kind of e-liquid as opposed to stainless steel or stainless rope. So the wicking material can affect the kind of vape that you're getting. You get devices like the GG Athaka, the Typhon, Python GT, the Kfun, and there's other devices on the market that all use silica instead of stainless steel as a wicking material. Personally, I prefer them because I vape more juice flavoured type stuff, uh, custards and uh, fruits and things like that. And I find personally that the silica devices work better. Um, some people will disagree, but uh, you know, each to their own at the end of the day. Um, I'll see if I can't actually just to show you. Um, I mean, what you have with, like, say, for example, the Ayate, inside the tank, it uses a ceramic cup like this. And your wicking material will sit in that cup like so, or normally would, and your coil would go inside that wee cup as well. And the juice gets fed to the coil via the wick. Um, very simplistic uh, demonstration there, but it gives you an idea, uh, which is what this video is all about, is just to give you an idea. Um, now, I'm trying to think of any other devices. You do get devices like the spheroid, and basically it works like a rebuildable dripping atomizer, but there's a tank above and that tank holds, let's just call it wool, it's like a cera filler wool, it's like uh, the f material you get in fish tanks wool, uh, and that absorbs the juice, and it usually holds about 2 ml of juice, and that drips, feeds the wick, much the same as this device. Um, and they are very good, they give a great flavour. Um, so, I think I've covered the basics. So just to go through rebuildables again, just to summarise, a rebuildable atomizer can be anything that you can rebuild the coil and wick yourself. coil and wick. The wick is whatever feeds the coil with juice. You know, the wick is going to sit in the liquid, your knee liquid. It will get fed towards the coil. When you push the button, the coil heats up and vaporizes your juice. A rebuildable, you can change all that out once the, start, the flavor starts to dissipate. You can rebuild it yourself. This is what this is all about. There are many different types of rebuildables. Uh, you have Genesis atomizers, um, you have silica atomizers, you have dripping atomizers, you have VV Novas, EVODs, there's so many different types. My advice, personal advice, if you're wanting to try rebuildables, get yourself something like a, an Igo L. A, a cheap dripping atomizer. It's the easiest way to learn how to rebuild something because you have lots of space to work in and you're working with uh, silica which is normally a lot more forgiving um, because as you'll see if you look at the video links that I've included in this uh, you have to suffer hot spots and things like that when you're working with the uh, Genesis atomizers and they can be the bane of your life. Um, there is so much more I could go on and discuss, but I really feel at this point this is the is a good introduction. Go and watch the links that I've embedded here, uh, and if you have any questions, 
you know, go along to my forum through my website and by all means ask as many questions as you like. I'm happy to help out. If I can't help, there's lots of other people there that will be able to answer the questions for you. As always, thank you for watching and uh, we'll catch up soon. Cheers now. Bye.